We recently visited with naturalist Eric Burkhardt at Penn State's Shavers Creek Environmental Center to talk about wild mushrooms. Eric wouldn't like being called an expert, but he certainly has an uncommon wealth of knowledge about wild edible and medicinal plants growing in our central Pennsylvanian woods. Eric led us on an easy foray, showing us the basics of wild mushroom identification. In order to get involved in the world of mushrooms, you really don't have to be a mushroom expert. There are so many mushrooms out there, particularly in a state like Pennsylvania, that it becomes quickly overwhelming to think that you can go out and identify every particular mushroom, you know, and be 100% sure. And, you know, the answer really is you don't need to. You can appreciate all kinds of mushrooms, but really, if you're interested in wild mushrooms, and particularly the edible or medicinal ones, you just learn to recognize those six to ten species, and you learn where to find them, when to find them, you know, the characteristics, and the common lookalikes. And there might be only two or three, you know, and they're all fairly easily distinguishable. The first thing to think about is where and when the mushroom is found. For instance, chanterelles will grow in association with certain trees like red oak, and they aren't going to be found before July. They're also a gregarious mushroom, popping up near each other, often in a circle around the tree. And then consider the physical characteristics of the mushroom, such as the cap color and markings, and the look of the underside, or hymenium, where there may be gills or pores. The underside of that hymenium has little ridges, little fluted ridges, not gills. It may also be useful to open up the stem. The inside of a bolete stem is spongy, and the inside of a morel stem is hollow through the cap. In addition to getting a good understanding of the few mushrooms you'd like to forage, such as morels or chanterelles, it's good to have an idea of what the most poisonous mushrooms look like. The Amanita family of mushrooms can be identified by both the little cup-like growth at the base of the stem, as well as a sort of warty or splotchy look on the cap of a lot of these mushrooms. On our walk with Eric, we happened to come across the infamous destroying angel. Ones that are white like this are the most deadly. And this one doesn't have any remnants on the top. It's very smooth. And while it was a bit early for chanterelles, we got lucky to find a few. The first of the season. Yeah, so this is one of the smaller ones. It's also earlier than our, our big chanterelle. And what I typically do is just leave some behind. You know, yeah. that's more than enough to lay down some spores for the next generation. We reluctantly left Eric to his lab in the sunshine at Shavers Creek, but we look forward to learning more from him soon at a wagon field day for wild mushroom marketing at Quiet Creek Herb Farm, a slice of woods in Brookville, Pennsylvania, where if we get lucky, we'll find some larger chanterelles by late July. This video is a production of the Pennsylvania Women's Agricultural Network, a group of more than 1,500 farmers, agricultural educators, and other professionals. We support women in agriculture by providing positive learning environments through on-farm field days, hands-on workshops, conferences, networking, and mentoring. Please visit our website to find more information about this topic, previous workshops, and upcoming events.